Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And in this one we're going to be creating what you can see on the screen. Now this is being done using a Python effector. I was recently approached by Ahmed Shakib, and I hope I've pronounced your name correctly, so a shout out goes out to you anyway for the idea for this. And he asked me if it was possible to clone objects onto another object at regular index values. So for example, can we clone a sphere onto an object every five index values? So 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. And do the same with other objects. Well, indeed we can, obviously, because we've got it here on the screen. So that's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. And you're going to find that it's actually quite simple to do it. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. The workflow is quite important with this. So the, the first thing to do is grab a cube. I'll just change its color to the sort of reddish color that we had for the example. And then we can think about what we're going to do with this object here. Well, the size I'm going to leave as it is. The segments, though, I'm going to make five by five by five. That's as much as I'm really going to change. I won't bother with a fillet or anything like that for this. And then the next thing to do is make it editable. So that's the cube dealt with and it's ready to go. And if we go into garage shading lines here, we can see that we've got our grid set up ready for our objects to be cloned onto the cube. The next thing then is to start bringing in the other objects. So we'll get a sphere, make its radius 10. We'll bring in a torus pipe radius and ring radius we're going to change so the ring radius will be 10 the pipe radius 5 and that's as much as I'm going to do with that finally I'm going to bring in a platonic and make its radius 10 as with this with the sphere and I'll also bring in a null object as, as well and we'll just reorganize these so we'll put them in that order and then we'll bring in a cloner and drop our objects into it and that's great. So we've got that set up. I'll just make the cube disappear for now. And I'll also change my display to isopalms here. And that's much better. OK, then moving on from here, we need to select our cloner and then grab a hold of a Python effector. And straight away, we can see it's working. We'll put full control in there in the mode and then switch to scripting layout oops that's sculpting don't want that one scripting and open our python effector in the editor as always we can get rid of the main loop there and just take that away and we're back to where we need to be the cloner initially i'm just going to make a linear cloner and i'm going to change the count value to four so that we get the null at the top OK, great. So moving on from here, then what we need to do is start working within our Python effector here. And aside from the matrix array, I also want to use the clone array and also the color array. So I'm going to bring both of those in. If we just paste that in there. And say car for color. And type color at the end of there and then we can paste again and say cla for clone array and on the end clone and then down here we can copy and paste this and put color in there and car and then paste again clone and clar and that gets all of our arrays sorted out so we're not going to have any problems there fantastic so the next thing we need to think about is where we're going from here well what i'm going to do is just set up a for loop initially so i'll say for i in range cnt for count and i'm simply going to say print ma brackets i 
and we'll find out. In fact, not Ma, Kla, beg your pardon, Kla, because I want to know what the identifying numbers are for our clones and we'll print those to our console here. So let's just see what happens when we do this. OK, great. And we've got our identifier numbers. So our sphere is 0, 0.0. Our torus, 0. Point, lots of numbers. <laughs> and our torus and, well, platonic, I should say, and null, the same thing. So these are the identifier numbers that we're going to be using to put our clones onto our cube, which, of course, is still here at regular intervals. That's what we're going to be doing here. So we can now move on with a bit more of the workflow. And that involves setting up the cloner. At the moment, we've got the mode as linear. We obviously want it to be object because we want to clone onto the cube. We'll leave iterate in the clones drop down here. In fact, we'll leave everything the same and we'll just drag this cube into the object field. Straight away, we're getting objects cloned onto it which is OK, but it's not doing it the way we want it to. Now, at the moment, we've got the distribution set to surface. We can set it to absolutely anything in here, actually. But with the distribution set to surface, you still get a count value down here and a seed. If we change it to vertex, they disappear and the clones are just placed around the vertices. Now, the count value, which of course no longer exists in here, it does still exist in here, and indeed it does actually still in exist within the cloner. But the count value now relates to the cube. So at the moment, the count value will be 98 because there are 98 vertices along the cube. OK, uh, the, so that's the important thing here. The count value now relates to this object as opposed to the number of clones. So that's important. So again, if we change it here to say polygon center, we've got a different count value now because there's a different number of polygon centers than there are vertices. And the same thing applies to all the other parameters in the distribution drop down. So that's something that's worth taking note of. Moving on from here, then we'll do a little bit more work within the Python effector. And the first thing I'm going to do actually is select the effector and then we'll start to add some user data. So what I'm going to do is say, well, I'm going to call this one spheres. Or spheres. Yeah, that will, yeah, spheres will do. That's fine. The data type will be an integer. And I'm going to use an integer slider for the interface. The step will be one. We need to go from two and I'll go to 20. If you wish to change this, you can, but make sure you start with two and we'll clamp the values. I'll copy this and call it Tori. Tori, and again, we can leave it exactly as it is other than that. Copy again and call this Platonics. And once again, we can leave it set up. So that's great. We've got those. And what I'll also do is add a group and I'll call this group modulos. And place it here so that we're out of the way of the user data here. And then we can start to bring these into here. OK, and that should set this up nicely for us. So let's see what we've got in modulos. And there we are. We've got them. So they're all ready for us and ready to go. So the next thing we can do then is drag these into the expression editor here. And we can say spheres equals op. Bring this one in. Tori equals op. Don't need a capital letter on the beginning of that. That will be fine. And then finally, platonics equals op. And that's our user data complete. We can now return to our loop and bring in the actual code that we need in there instead of this print statement. So we'll remove that. The first thing I'm going to say is if I p 
percentage for modulo spheres. So we're working with the value that we've got here is equal to zero. We can then say CLA brackets I is equal to 0, 0.0. So we're going to be using our sphere as the first object that we're going to clone onto the cube. OK, so that's the first thing we're going to do. We'll also give that we'll give our cube a color. So we'll say car brackets I is equal to C4D dot vector brackets and we'll say one comma one comma zero. So we'll get yellow spheres. We can then say alif. So it's an alif situation here. I modulo tori is equal to zero. And it will be cla brackets I is equal to. And we need to copy this value for our tori. So we'll copy this and paste it in here. So that will sort that out for us. We can then say car brackets I is equal to and again it will be C4D dot vector. So let's copy this. Just this bit will do oops, just this bit will do fine. Paste that in there. And this time we'll say zero comma one comma zero. So we'll get green tori. Alif I modulo platonics is equal to zero. Cla brackets I is equal to and we'll copy this value. Paste it in here. Car brackets I oops is equal to once again C four D dot vector. So we'll just copy this and paste. Didn't really need to do that, could have just pasted, but there you go. And it'll be zero comma one comma one, and that'll give us C N coloured platonics. And then finally we can just say else cla brackets i equals and we want our final value just paste that in there and then we'll get the null objects anywhere we're not going to get any of these that's basically what i'm doing there right so let's see what happens so what we've got here, we've got integer division by zero. OK, so not a problem. That's because we're not set up in here properly. So let's see what we can do. Yeah, if we just move these, it should sort itself out. And there we go, it does. And at the moment, it's not set up as we'd like. So what we'll do is just adjust these fit numbers here. So we'll bring the slider out to five for the spheres. Bring this one out to three and we'll leave the platonics here at two or maybe we'll change that we might change this say to four and, and leave this at three see what we get there okay so we're starting to get a reasonable sort of distribution here that's something a bit different now the tori we think are a little bit well i think they're a little bit off so what i'll do is change their orientation to plus z and that's better i think that looks better yeah so you can see that the distribution is now working and it's it's given us a sort of artistic control by using the 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 modulos here on the on the Python effect. So we can change things. I mean, if you wish, if you wanted to set it up as two, two, two so that you just get the spheres, that's fine. I mean, if you don't want the spheres to be the object, you can just rearrange things in here. Um, and now you're getting tori, but they're still yellow, uh, interestingly enough. But that's because, of course, they're now in here. So, you you know, you, you might need to make some minor adjustments if you want to play around a bit with this. 
uh, and just rearrange things in the code as well. But uh, yeah, you've got quite a lot of artistic control over this. So if we just set that back up, set that to there. Now we've got quite a nice distribution with four, three and two. That, that actually works quite nicely. So yeah, I mean, essentially that's all you need to do in order to place objects on another object or clone objects onto another object at regular intervals using the index values. Just use modulos, that's all you've got to do. It's just that simple piece of code. And of course, if you didn't want to change the colors, you don't need the color array, you just need the clone array. But I just put it in there because I thought it was more artistically pleasing, just more pleasing on the eye. But anyway, that is how you go about doing it. So, as always, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it's given you some pointers for things that you can do within your own projects. And if you have, then please give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment and of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please share this video because all of this good stuff helps keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that just about brings this one to a close. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.